Hello everyone. Today we will be starting on the third section of the historical uses of metals. We'll be focusing on alloys today. An alloy is a mixture of metals with one or more, more elements, usually metals, combined together. So there are examples of solid solutions. You probably did um, liquid solutions in year 10 and year 9, but now we'll be focusing on solid solutions, which are alloys. The history of alloys. Alloys were first discovered by accident. It was a contamination of minerals by other mineral impurities that caused the discovery of alloys. Thus, arsenic bronze was discovered because copper minerals contain small quantities of arsenic minerals. Because of the presence of arsenic minerals, when you smelted the copper, you got arsenic bronze instead of pure copper. When these impure copper minerals were smelted, and arsenic bronze was produced rather than pure copper. In the modern era, new alloys are designed to produce materials with the desired properties. Mostly, metals do not have the desired properties. Sometimes they may lack in one of the properties. And to enhance all those properties, what you would do is to add another metal. And that way, you would always get the desired properties. And alloys do that. So we will be comparing alloys and metals in terms of um, physical properties. Alloys are much harder and more malleable than metals. And this is because it disturbs the regular arrangement of the crystal lattice, leading to the formation of a new lattice. Because it disrupts the uh, regular arrangement of the crystal lattice, it provides a much harder and more malleable structure. Alloys are also poorer conductors of electrical um, electricity that is because of the presence of impurities and these impurities are the other metals that are composed that are composing the alloy it disrupts the crystal lattice creating defects so when ca charge carriers move in a alloy it would have many disruptions and become therefore it is a poorer electrical conductor the component metals determine the color of the alloy. So different components would um, determine the color. For example, a higher copper content will result in a golden color. Now you would, we will be focusing more on examples of alloys. An example is the 20 cent coin. It's made out of nickel and copper. And there is 75% of copper and 25% of nickel. This is a relatively large uh, percentage of nickel and that is why it is silvery grey in appearance. However, the $1 coin, which is golden, is made up of copper, aluminium and nickel. And as you can see, the copper, uh, copper content is much more higher than that of the 20 cent coin. And that is the result of the golden appearance. Now we'll be looking at um, brass, which is an alloy. It is an alloy of copper and zinc. It is much harder than copper due to the presence of zinc. And the color is dependent on the zinc, zinc content. So as the zinc content goes up, it'll be more silvery in color. Low zinc content results in a golden color, hence used for imitation jewelry. So as I said, if there is a lower zinc, uh, zinc content, it will be more golden. And the typical composition of brass is 67% copper and 33% zinc. Uses and properties of brass. So brass is used for hardware items such as screws and bolts. And it is used for these purposes because it's hard, it's readily machined and it's also corrosion resistant. It is also used for musical instruments, decorative items and doorknobs due to its luster. Now solder is also another alloy. It is the alloy of lead and tin. It is composed of lead and tin. And the percentage would vary according to application. That means 
if some application requires more of the lead properties, it would have a higher lead content than tin content. The proportion of the metals determine the melting point. As you can see, they do not have a fixed melting point, but as you increase or decrease each of the uh, metals that are inside the alloy, the melting point would vary in correspondence. Uses of solder. Solder is used to join metals together, adheres strongly to other metals and it is molten and solid state. So because of its adhering properties, it is used to join metals together. There are two types of solder. One is electrician solder, solder which is highly conducting and it solidifies quickly. That means less heat damage. And the second one is silver solder, which, is, which does not contain any lead, lead or tin, but it has silver, copper and zinc. So it's got 70% silver, 20% copper and 10% zinc. Steel is also another alloy and it's an alloy of iron. I, steel is categorized into two, carbon steel and alloy steel. We we'll look at carbon steel in detail. Carbon steel has three main types of steel. There is mild steel, which has a low carbon content of less than 0.2%. It has these properties mainly due to its low carbon content. It is soft and it's also malleable and ductile. Its uses are car bodies, roofing, nails and chains. Then comes structural steel. It has a moderate carbon content of 0.3 to 0.6%. And the properties include hardness and ductility. The uses are girders, tra rail tracks, and axles. Now it is always important to always relate your properties and uses so they're corresponding to one another when you're listing them. High carbon steel is a third type. It has a high carbon content of 0.6 to 1.3%. It is hard and it has a relatively low malleability, which makes it useful for small tools, axes and cutlery. Now we'll be looking at alloy steels. Alloy steels, there are two types. One is stainless steel. Stainless steel has a um, metal composition of carbon, chromium and nickel. The uh, carbon content is relatively low with less than 0.2%. Chromium is around 4 to 30% and nickel again around 0 to 20%. So these may vary according to application. Properties. They are corrosion resistance and it has a high tensile strength which makes it very useful for kitchen sinks, cutlery and surgical appliances. Tool steel is also an alloy steel. It has a relatively large carbon content with 0.9 to 1.5 percent. It is it contains tungsten and molybdenum. Tungsten there's 14 to 20 percent, and molybdenum there's 0 to 9 percent. Properties include very hard, high tensile strength, and heat resistance. So these properties makes it very useful for cutting tools and grinding tools. Now this, uh, in this section we learned about three different types of alloys. We looked at brass, bronze and steel and we looked at how they are used in, um, used in application. We'll go to some questions now. Question 10. The alloy which contains a non-metal. We have option A, a stainless steel. Stainless steel contains chromium and nickel, and they're all metals, so option A is not the answer. Option C contains copper, arsenic, or tin, which are all metals again, so bronze is not the answer. Option D contains copper and zinc, which are all metals, so brass is not the answer. Option B, carbon steel. It has a carbon, which is a major component, therefore B is the answer. Now moving on to question 11, which is again a multiple choice question. The alloy made of lead and tin is A, brass. Brass is made up of copper and zinc, so 
uh, option A is not the answer. Option B, bronze, made of copper and arsenic or tin. So these it may vary according to application and it is not the answer because it is not made of lead and tin. Stainless steel contains chromium and nickel therefore option D is not the answer. Option C, solder, contains lead and tin therefore solder is the answer. The answer is option C. Moving on to question 12. Explain why alloys are classified as mixtures. Now what we have to do in this question is first, as always, highlight the key verb, which is explain, and see why it's classified as mixtures. In this case, it is very good to define mixtures. They, they are made of two or more metals mixed together in any proportion, so they do not have a constant composition or chemical formula. Since alloys vary in their composition, they do not have a constant composition or a chemical formula and that is exactly why they're called mixtures and this is a definition of a mixture. So their properties vary with their composition and this fits to the definition of a mixture. Now let's move on to question 13. Question 13 comes in two parts. Part A, explain why stainless steel rather than copper or iron is more commonly used in saucepans. Again, always underline your key term. Your key term would help you answer your question better and be more precise with the wording. Now, we have to, in this question, we approach it by most commonly used in saucepans. So the application here we have to know is saucepans. And why is stainless steel used rather than these? So you would highlight the disadvantages of copper or iron, copper and iron, because it says or in the question, you have to always refer to both in your answer. Why stainless steel is better? So you would highlight the advantages of stainless steel. Stainless steel is corrosion resistant where iron is not. Here you were providing why iron is not suitable for saucepans. Here you would be providing why copper isn't. Copper is much softer than stainless steel and is readily dented. Copper will oxidize on its surface and needs constant cleaning. So these two points are um, evidence for why copper isn't a good uh, metal for saucepans and this is why iron is not a good metal for saucepans. And your concluding statement should say why stainless steel is. This makes stainless steel more suitable for saucepans. And that is how you would go about answering an explain question. It has to be very detailed and always provide evidence for all your, an um, all your answers. Now we'll go to uh, section B. Section B says, suggest why aluminium or copper bases are often attached to stainless steel saucepans. Now we would first underline the keyword which is um, suggest and here we have to say why stainless steel is not sufficient enough and why aluminium or copper would provide a better base. Stainless steel has a very low thermal conductivity and this is our disadvantage of stainless steel. So more conductivity, conductive metals such as copper and aluminium need to be attached as bases to allow the heat to be conducted into the food. And here we're highlighting the advantage of copper and aluminium. So this is how you would go about answering a question. You would always have to break it into sections and answer every part of it to get full marks. Moving on to question 14, it says, state some common uses of solder. Note the verb is state, so you would only have to just name it and provide a very de um, brief description. So it says, solder is used to join metals together in different situations. For example, electrical wires can be joined to other wires and in plumbing pipes, it can be joined as well. So this is a um, answer that you would provide for a question that says state. 
Moving on to question 15 now. Bronze medals for the Olympic Games were made of 85% copper and 15% tin. Outline properties of this alloy that led to its use for this purpose. Again, we would be uh, underlining the key verb, which is outline. And we are given a statement before the question. So the statement has to be incorporated in your answer. So bronze medals for the Olympic Games were made of 85% copper and 15% tin. Now your application here is a medals, so you will be thinking of uses and properties that corresponding to the use of medals. So bronze has an attractive appearance and it's hard and it resists corrosion. So this makes it more durable and metals need durability. So this uh, brings us to the end of the lesson and the end of the section, the historical use of metals. In this section, we learned about the history of metals where we went through the Stone Age, the Copper Age, the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. We talked about alloys as well as the contemporary uses of metals. Music